Hello everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about the concentration of solutions. Now, straight away I'm going to tell you that the formula to work out the concentration of a solution is the following. So it's the number of moles divided by the solution volume. Please make sure that when you use this formula, uh, obviously n is in moles and then volume must be in decimeters. So we pretty much always use decimeters except for when we use the PV equals NRT formula. In that formula you must use meters cubed. Alright, so let's practice. So here it says determine the concentration if you put 36 grams of NaOH in 250 centimeters of water or centimeter cubed. So we know that concentration is equal to moles divided by volume. It's going to be given to you on the formula sheet. So we need to work out moles. They've given us the mass so we can use n equals to m over mr. We should know this off by heart by now. The mass is 36. The mr you would get on your periodic table but to save space I've added the values over here. So for Na it's 23 plus oxygen plus hydrogen and that will give us a value of 40. Now if you work that out you're going to end up with 0 0.9 moles. Now be careful, volume here is given in centimeter cube and they often do do this, however we would like it to be in decimeters. So to convert from centimeter cube to decimeter cube you must divide by a thousand. So the volume will be 250 divided by a thousand which will be 0 0.25 and so our concentration is going to be the number of moles which is 0 0.9 over our concentration I mean over our volume which is 0 0.25 and if you work that out you will end up with 3.6 now the units for concentration is moles per decimeter like that here's another question it says determine the concentration if you put 50 grams of H2SO4 in a 250 centimeter solution of water. So once again we know that concentration is N over V. We don't have the moles. So what your teacher might do is they will do the following. They will take the formula for moles which is M over MR and they will plug this into here. And so they'll tell you that the formula for concentration is something like that. Okay, you can use that if you want, but please note that it's the same thing that I'm busy doing. I'm just doing it in two separate parts because I find that most of my students prefer that. And so I'll go work out the moles separately, but your teacher might do everything in one step. So the mass is going to be 50 over the molar mass of H2SO4. Now as I said that's always from the periodic table but I've gone and collected the individual values so there's going to be two hydrogens so we'll say one plus one there's one sulfur molecule and four oxygens. If you add that up you will get 98 and so that will be our MR and so if we go work out the moles we get 0 0.51 moles. So now we have the vol I mean the number of moles which is 0 0.51. The volume is in centimeter cubed so you must divide that by a thousand and that's going to give you 0 0.25. If you do this you're going to get an answer of 2.04 mole per decimeter to the negative 3. Here's another one. So here they say what mass of lithium hydroxide do I need in order to make a solution that has a volume of that and a concentration whenever you see mole dot dm minus 3 that is a concentration um, so they've given us V and they've given us C so if we look at the formula C equals to N over V we could work it backwards and we could find the number of moles so we'll fill the concentration in as 0 comma 6 N we don't know, the volume is 250, but remember that that must be in decimeters, so you divide by 1000 and you get 0 0.25. We could then work out moles by taking the 0 0.25 to the left, so that'll be 0 0.6 multiplied by 0 0.25, and so the number of moles would be 0 0.15 moles. Okay, now we can use the N equals to M over MR formula, 
where we've got the number of moles as 0, 0,15, the mass we don't know, that's the point of the question, and then the MR we could get off our periodic table, but we've got the values here. So for lithium it's 7, there's 1 oxygen and there's 1 hydrogen, and so that's going to be a mass of 24, and so we could work out the mass by taking this 24 over to the left, and so you're going to end up with 0 0.15 times by 24, and so the mass would be equal to 3.6. Now the unit of uh, mass is grams. They tell us that 40 grams of sodium carbonate is dissolved in a 200 centimeter cube solution. Determine the concentration of the solution for A. So we know that that's C equals to N over V. We have the volume, they've given us that, we need to get the moles. So we could use N equals to M over MR, where the mass is 40 that they've given us. And then we need to work out the molecular, or I mean the molar mass of sodium carbonate. They've given us the values from the periodic table. So that's going to be 23 plus 23, because there's two sodiums, plus one carbon, plus three oxygens. If you go add that all together, you will get 106. So the mass that we can use down here is 106, and so the number of moles would be 40 over 106, and that's going to give us 0 0.38 moles. Now we can use our C equals N over V formula, where we can fill in the moles as 0 0.38, and the volume is 200, but that's in centimeters, so if you divide that by 1,000, you get 0 0.2, and if you go work this out, we end up with 1,9 mole per decimeter. Okay, so we now have the concentration of our solution. So let's say here, 1.9. Moving on to B, they say determine the concentration of the sodium ion. Now, some students get confused here. What you need to realize in a question like this is that sodium carbonate, when you put it in water, it actually breaks up into sodium ions and carbonate ions. Okay, now you need to know from memory that carbonate has a charge of minus two. Now, we need to balance this equation. Oh, and you also need to know from your periodic table that sodium has a valency of plus one because it's in group one. Now, to balance this, we'd have to put a two in the front over there. So what's interesting is that it tells us for every one of these sodium carbonates, you are going to form two sodium ions. So there's going to be double the amount of sodium ions than sodium carbonate. So if the concentration of sodium carbonate is 1.9, then the concentration of the Na plus will be double that. And so you would say 1.9 multiplied by 2, which is 3.8 moles per decimeter. So you just have to look at the mole ratios. Because think about it, guys. If you have a liquid or a solution and you've got these Na2CO3s floating around, we've just worked out that the concentration of that was 1.9. But think about what this is actually going to do in the water. It's actually going to break up, and so your situation would actually look like this. And you see what I've done here? So I took this Na2CO3 and I broke it up into two Na molecules, because that's what the equation tells us, and then there's one CO3 minus two molecule. So, and then the same would happen with this one. So what we can see is that two of these produces four Na pluses, because every time one of them breaks up, two Na pluses are produced. So that means that the concentration of Na plus would be more. There's going to be a lot more than um, the Na2CO3, and that is why I doubled the concentration. The next one says determine the concentration of the CO3, or the carbonate ion. Well, have a look here, guys. For every one of these that breaks up, it forms one carbonate ion. So here we've got two of these, and we've also got two carbonate ions. So we can see, and we can also see from the reaction equation, that the ratio of sodium carbonate 
to carbonate is a one-to-one -one ratio. So their concentrations will be the same. And so we worked out in the question A that the concentration of sodium carbonate is 1.9. And so the concentration of the carbonate ion will also be 1.9 moles per decimeter. So let's practice another question like that because I know that that can be a little bit confusing. So question A says, determine the concentration of the solution. So we know that concentration is moles divided by volume. Now they've given us the mass, they've given us 100 grams of CaCl2, so we could use N equals to M over MR, and we could work out the moles. Now the MR is from your periodic table, but obviously as always we've got the values here, and so calcium is going to be, um, we can say 40, and then there's going to be two chlorine atoms, and that's going to be plus 35.5 plus another 35.5, and if you go work that out, you get a total mass of 111. And so if you work that out, you get, that's going to give you 0, 0,9. So the number of moles will be 0, 0,9. So then we could easily work out the concentration of the solution, because it will be 0, 0,9 over the volume, which is 200. But we always change that to decimeters, so that's going to be 0, 0,2. And so the concentration of that solution will be 4.5 moles per decimeters. Okay, but now that's always going to be for the CaCl2. Just remember that. That's always for the CaCl2. Now they're starting to ask us for the concentration of the individual ions. So what we need to do is we need to see what happens when you put CaCl2 in water. Well, it obviously breaks up into its Ca plus 2 ion and its Cl negative 1. Where am I getting these numbers? Let's say they didn't ask it nicely in the question. Well, Ca calcium is in group 2 on your periodic table and we know that group 2 always has a valency of plus 2 and chlorine is in group 7 and group 7 atoms always have a valency of minus 1. We would then have to balance this equation because that's the important part. We see that there's two chlorines on the left and so we'd have to put a 2 over there. Everything is now balanced. So what this tells us is that every time you have a CaCl2 molecule when it breaks up it will break up into one Ca and two Cl's. So your Ca concentration will be the same as your CaCl2 because they are in a one-to-one -one ratio. It's the same. So B's answer will also be 4.5 moles per decimeter. Then the next question says, determine the concentration of the chlorine ion. Well, what we can see is that for every one of these, the CaCl2s, you will produce two Cl- molecules. So there will be twice as many Cl- minuses, or twice as many chlorine ions, and so the concentration will be 4.5 times by 2, and so the concentration of Cl will be 9 moles per decimeter. Alright guys, so that's the end of this lesson. I hope that that all makes sense.